Welcome to the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel A. Bakutana, your host, Certified Executive Coach, Award-Winning Leadership Consultant, Global Speaker and Author, the Provincial Fathers Union President and CEO of Inspired Leaders International. This program is here to equip, challenge and also empower or encourage men to be able to expand their family leadership capacity for the sake of national transformation. And today is the 19th of November. I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching us from around the world. Today, the 19th of November, is a day that many people don't know about. <laughs> Every year, there is a celebration on this day. And that is none other than the International Men's Day. International Men's Day is on the 19th of November. And that's the day today. This day, I want to tell you a few things about this day. It started about 30 years ago, in 1992. <laughs> I know you were shocked, just like I was shocked the first time I heard about it. This day has been here, and its broader aim is really to promote basic awareness towards men's issues. When we talk about men's issues, what are those issues? Let me give you some quick global facts about the condition of men. Research shows that 76% of suicides globally are men. 85% of the homeless globally are men. 71% of homicide victims are men. 40% of domestic abuse victims are men. And men are the majority victims of violent crime. Men, on average, serve 64% longer time in prisons of this world. And men, on average, are 3.4 times more likely to be imprisoned than women when both commit the same crime. Isn't it high time that we attended to these issues with soberness? <laughs> Not only soberness, but also with grace? So, this International Men's Day is a global holiday celebrated to address some of these issues. And this year, 2022, the theme is helping men and boys while appreciating the contributions that they make in the family, in child care, in the communities, in institutions, and in nations. This day is celebrated at the moment in 57 countries all over the world. Official public holiday. Countries like Argentina, Austria, uh, Belgium, Botswana, Burundi, Canada, China, Denmark, Cuba, China, France, Ghana, India, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Mexico, to mention but a few. So today our topic is one, appreciating model men. Yeah, we have some men that may not be that, of, that much of a good example, but how about those that are? Today we want to give those attention. And in the studio is a squad, <laughs> an indefatigable squad, an undefeatable squad, none other than three awesome ladies that are going to be conversing with me about the modern men in their lives and the things they appreciate about them. If you are a man watching right now, I hope as these ladies share, you will be picking critical qualities and traits that you too need to develop in order to be a man that your, your wife will appreciate, in order to be a man that your daughter will appreciate, in order to be a man that your children will celebrate. From the extreme right is none other than Christine Chayonka. Let me request you to introduce yourself, Madam Christine. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> viewers from wherever you are. I'm Christine Chayonka a retired senior educationist, currently doing business, but above all, in the kingdom of the Lord, I am a digital and food evangelist. I gossip the gospel. Besides that, I serve as the parish council secretary at the St. Luke's Church of Uganda and Tinder. I am an author to be on 1st first December, I'm becoming an author. I'm launching my first book. Awesome. 
I love people, I love mentoring, I love counseling, I love comforting people. That is who Christine is. What a joy to have you here today. Thank you, Samuel. And I could as well say you are already an author. Just that you're not yet a published one. Okay. <laughs> you are already an author. So what is going to be happening on, uh, on the 1st of December yes. is that officially this world will know you as an author because you'll be launching your book. Amen. Yes. I can't wait because by God's grace, I believe I will be there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, and then next is Carolyn. Please, would you like to introduce yourself? Good evening, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, <laughs> wherever you are. Um, glad to be here. Mm -hmm. My name is Caroline Oyera Papawok. I am um, married mm -hmm. with two children, lovely, 15 and 12 years old. I am an encourager. Mm -hmm. And a professional You're the wise, one we needed on this program today. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love morale boosting. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm a sports person. Interesting. Yes. Which sports do you play? Just uh, as a Right now, apart mm -hmm. from the walking as an exercise, yes. but I have done volleyball, netball, I have run, wow. anything that I could put my heart to. Um, yes, so, okay. yes, mm. I, um, I love the Lord, and like Christine says, mm. and like I said earlier, mm. I like to morale boost, to encourage <laughs> all those around me because yes. I love joy yes, around me. Yes, I know you for that. <laughs> it's very rare to find you not smiling. <laughs> Great, you're very welcome, Caroline, and it's Thank good you. to have you on the program today. Thank you. And then on my very immediate right is my awesome friend, my young sister. Give me a high five. <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> please introduce yourself. Okay, good evening, mm. good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. <laughs> Depending on the time you'll be watching us, mm. um, Gloria Nansubuga Babide from. Uh, St. John's Church, Kamocha, mm. and also currently I work with Platinum Credit mm. as a tail sales officer. Yes. I love sports too, like my <laughs> sister said. Yeah. I love sports, basically badminton and aerobics, jogging, all yes. that. I love you're, lo you're, you're leaving out volleyball yet I often play it with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not so skillful at that, but yes. I love volleyball as well. Mm. Okay, I love passive and active sports. Yeah. Yes. So I love children. Mm. I love uh, humanities, mm. like reaching out to people. Mm. I love public speaking. In general, I love the Lord. Yes. And I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah. You're very welcome. And it's a joy to have you on set today, on Thank air. Thank you so much. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen who are watching, we are talking about appreciating modern men. And I would like to begin with you, Christine. When you hear the way this world is busy bashing men from east to west, north, south, all over the place, bashing them. I want to ask, are there still some good men left to appreciate? Oh yeah, they are, they are good men. I mean, I have one of the greatest men that I've actually had in my life is my late husband. I don't think there's any man that measures to what Ivan was. Oof. So calm, <laughs> so loving, so caring so passionate about what he does mm. he made me feel like a queen you know wow i mean he provided for me mm. he always wanted the best which man comes and looks at your hair and says haven't you gone to the saloon today <laughs> and he, he he passes you the money that you need yeah, to go to yes. the saloon he wanted me to look nice he doesn't wait for you to be the one to ask for that i did have to ask and yet he knew that I was working, Yes. but that was what he was. Mm -hmm. So you just pull out the money and remind me you go to the salon. Mm. I mean, at no time did I ever see my husband actually. He was very, very calm. Sometimes mm. I would get a bit naughty, mm -hmm. but he was so calm. You don't look like somebody who can get naughty. No, there are times when you get naughty when, when certain <laughs> things happen and then you are like, oh, testing okay. the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But then this is a calm man who just look at you and just smiles and and that is it. Mm -hmm. I never saw him raise his temper or yes. his words or his voice mm -hmm. at me mm -hmm. or anybody at home. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that was just one in uh, in maybe one in eight billion. Is there another? <laughs> Do no. we have other men like that? Do we still have good men? We is the question that every many people are asking, especially women. You hear many women say, "Ah, uh ah." -uh. 
Men were those of 1940. Today, mm, are they still good men? I have, have, seen, to appreciate? I have seen good Besides men. Besides your husband. I have seen good men. In the church where I belong to, mm. St. Luke's Church of Uganda and Tinder, there are these young marrieds that I look at and mm. they are role models. Mm. And I make reference to them wherever <laughs> I am. And I tell them. Mm. And I even appreciate their parents because mm. I think it came from their upbringing. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't just grow from somewhere. Oh, yes. And I even tell their children mm. to ask them that, do you know that your daddy is a superstar? <laughs> are you aware that he is a superstar? Mm. So that I actually appreciate these young men. Mm in the face of their children and in the presence of other people. Mm -hmm. So that people can look to them and actually go back to them and ask, what is it that Mrs. Chayok has seen in you which she appreciates? <laughs> because when they value the kind of appreciation that I give, then that speaks to them. There are very many of them. I have so many of them. Awesome. And I am glad that in the young generation, yes. I have those kinds of young men yes. that can actually pass on that button to their wow. children and generations to come. Wow. Gloria, there is hope. Did you hear that? Yes. That the young men are <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yeah, yeah. in the yeah. coming generation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there is hope, yes. <laughs> and I want to be giving a message moment at uh, different intervals. Uh, like right now, I have a message coming from Miriam Ndianabo Atoki, the head teacher of uh, British School of Kampala, who happens to be an advocate mm -hmm. of men and the boy child. And this is the message she has sent mm -hmm. through this program this evening. She says, I would like to appreciate all the men in my life, men who have appreciated me for every little or big thing we have done together, men who have guided me in different spheres, and men who have made me the mother that I am today. Particularly, I thank you, Mr. Mujuche Chief and Mr. Mujuche Chairman. <laughs> That's a message from Miriam. So, Chief and Chairman, thank you for the work that you did in the life uh, of, uh, of Miriam. And then also, message number two from Esther Waguma, the Executive Assistant to the CEO of Bible Society of Uganda. He says, I appreciate my husband, Mr. Ben Otuba, and my late dad, Absalom Waguma. In these two men, I found an interesting abundance of similar qualities that I appreciate. Selfless, servant heart, respect for time, best parents to their children, providers, leaders, encouragers, hardworking people, friendly and humble, with a sense of humor, and exemplary Christian men. <laughs> wow, they are good men. Christine, let me come back to you. So, which man or which man would you like to celebrate today on this International Men's Day? And why? There are three particular men that I would like to celebrate. Mm. The first of the men that I want to celebrate is my late brother, mm. Dr. Simon Peter Osinde. Mm -hmm. At the time of his passing, he was a senior lecturer at Gulu University, a lecturer of anatomy. Simon was my only brother from my father and mother, and he followed me. Mm. But he was so loving. I remember at a certain point in time, life at home was very difficult, and we got to that point where we had to share very, very little. Mm. And I remember this time, our mom used to buy, there were very tiny pieces of soap, mm -hmm. I think less than 250 grams, I think, and it was lax. So one time she bought that soap and wanted to cut it into two pieces so that Simon could take a piece mm. and I take a piece. Mm -hmm. And my brother said and told mommy and said, Mommy, let Christine have the whole piece of soap. Sacrifice. I, he sacrificed. He was that sacrificial. Mm -hmm. And then one time he lost his, uh, his sight, became poor and he came to Kampala. Mm. And uh, after getting the glasses that was given, my sister gave him some little money and gave him a kilogram of sugar. Mm. He was a student at St. Peter's College, Tororo then. Mm. Simon came to Tororo Girls School where I was. He requested that he needed to see me because it was urgent. And he asked the headmistress that I would like to share this sugar with my sister. I want her to take half of it and then give me back half. Generosity. He was so generous. And because of that, even when he passed on, mm. I mean, he gave me a legacy. He showed me that love. Mm. He showed me that care. Okay. That there was no way that I was going to abandon his children <clears throat> halfway the way. That is one man. The next one? The next man was my husband. Ivan I, I saw it coming. <laughs> 
born in a polygamous family, life was not very pleasant, mm. and that is what caused us to have to share those little bits of things like soap. Yes. So in this man, I got somebody who gave me a firm foundation mm. of where there was love, of where I could talk to somebody, where I had a confidant, where I had a friend, where I had a mentor. Mm -hmm. Not only for me, but for my children and all my relatives. Mm. He embraced all of us. He would go to visit my mother, I didn't have to be there. Mm -hmm. He would plan what it is that our parents needed. Mm. He took care of my siblings. He took care of my late siblings' children. Mm. That was love. Yes. Love immeasurable. Indeed. Indeed. The other person that I celebrate today, and I don't think he knows it, this mm. is the first time and somebody will tell him, mm. that is Professor Frederick Kayanja. Mm -hmm. He was the former vice chancellor of Mbarai University of Science and Technology. Yes. I first got to know about Professor Frederick Kayanja when my brother was a student at Old Kampala Secondary School. Mm. And Professor Kayanja, while he was a lecturer at uh, the veterinary uh, school in Makerere, mm. was also teaching biology at uh, Old Kampala SS. Yes. He liked my brother. He took a liking for my brother. Mm -hmm. He taught my brother. He mentored my brother, and eventually when he became Vice-Chancellor at Mbara University of Science and Technology, mm. he asked Dr. Sinde, a vet doctor then, to go and do his master's in Mbarara. He groomed him to become yes. a lecturer of anatomy. A mentorship heart. A mentorship heart. Yes. He treated my brother better than any male relative had ever treated my brother. Wow. I saw love in this person. And when he attended my brother's graduation for his PhD, mm. everybody wondered and said, the VC to go to Osinde's The vice chancellor is here. The vice chancellor, Professor Kayanja. I salute. can never thank you enough. I salute you. I celebrate you. I know you met at very many people, but for Osinde, I give you thanks. Wow. May the Lord continue blessing you for that love. Picking somebody from Tororo and here you are <laughs> and taking Toronto. him as your own child. That was immense for me. Wow. From Tororo to Toronto, yes. from Kansanga to Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> I hear the young people say those things. Yeah. <laughs> from nowhere to somewhere. Yeah. True. Indeed, those yeah. are wonderful traits. Yes. And those traits are resident in many men. Yes. Mm. They yeah. are many good men. True. Yeah. They are still there. We are there. You are there, too, <laughs> you are there. Okay. Message moment number three from Mrs. Agatha Chisache Kabugo, mm -hmm. a friend of children, mm -hmm. a teen's mentor, an author of a number of books, and a founder of Oakdale Brook. Mm -hmm. She says, I celebrate my late paternal grandfather, who was a total orphan and born alone, but his seed of obedience and honor to the people who raised him has yielded a great harvest, of which I am counted among them. Carol, it's good to have you here with us. Glad to be here. We are now agitating morning to evening, Monday to Sunday, January to December. We are agitating for equality. Equality, equality, equality. Who is agitating? We. <laughs> we, especially the females, the women, agitating for gender equality. Yet, we systematically, quite intentionally, in an organized manner, neglect men's issues. Why do you think that is so? <sighs> <laughs> That's a tough one. Yes, the agitating for equality mm. is there and has been there for quite a while. Yeah. But why we are neglecting mm. the men's issues, mm -hmm. now that's a hard one. Mm. That's a very hard one. Because equality would actually mean equality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when equality means inequality, th then it becomes confusing. When inclusiveness looks like exclusiveness, you get it, it becomes confusing. Why is this kind of thing happening? Um, I think from the past, um, and why agitation for equality came through, mm. was to try and elevate because the woman had been, or the girl child, mm. had, had kind of like, you know, school is not for them, and yes. some things were not for them. Mm. That they don't so eat the gizzard. they don't eat the gizzard and those nice things. <laughs> and so I think when, probably it was the way in which it was agitated for, mm. that it came out, I think, you know, when someone is hurting, uh -huh. 
and they're trying to bring a solution and mm -hmm. you're coming from a hurt side, you end yes. up hurting uh -huh. others along the Heart way. Hurt people end up hurting, hurting people. others, yes. yes. And so I believe if, you know, like after all, this was done to me, so let me focus on this and mm -hmm. then thereby you end up, you know, um, disregarding, mm -hmm. you know, certain issues or certain people around us. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that... Um, there was a heart mm -hmm. in that agitation and then as we have been agitated for as the female we also kind of like take on uh, you know because god created us as helpers yes you know eve was a helper to adam adam was supposed to do all these things and of course i know some of us say but adam has neglected his duties mm. but why probably because adam has felt um uh, different differentized yes you know he has felt let aside mm. and probably maybe as women sometimes we actually disrespect mm. the men in our lives mm. regardless of what they're doing instead of trying to understand mm. and see how best do we move forward together mm -hmm. my my not my husband but i'll just give us an example mm. if i feel like there's something he's not doing instead of me trying to fight back and prove my worth mm. i need to be able to understand mm where is the problem yes. what can we do mm -hmm. and of course we've seen that uh, most times gentlemen are not quick mm -hmm. to discuss some of these issues because mm -hmm. they say women we process women the information we, internally, internally yes. you know and they say women say how many 60,000 words of things <laughs> you know in, in such a short time they are incubators we, you give them one word they give they, they just novel. multiply it you know <laughs> and so if we stop for a while to try and understand and it made sometimes it's really painstakingly slow yeah so we true. have to be patient mm -hmm. but in this day and age patience mm -hmm. is is, <laughs> is, is one of those products one you of don't those find things on the shelf that are, 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 are on the shelves That's so true. yeah i think we just need to be patient mm -hmm. we need to be able to understand yes like you say, mm. some men have probably neglected mm. some of their responsibilities. Just like some women have. Just like we also do. At, yeah. at, let's say at the workplace, yeah. I might have neglected something, mm. but if it's pointed out, because mm. then you're from a, from a heart of love, mm. you know, when you rebuke someone in love, mm. then you'll get the best out of them. All right. Great. Thank you very much, Carol. And uh, we are going to take a short break in about uh, 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, you will be telling us which man or which man you celebrate today on this day. And then Gloria will also share with us the people that she is celebrating today. But I want to uh, take us to the break with this message moment from Brenda Abeja, who happens to be a professional coach at Eagle Light Associates. She says, I will honor three men today on this International Men's Day. Number one, my father. We called him Baba, rest in peace. He wasn't my, uh, my biological father, but when he married my mother, he asked her to bring me along, and from age six, he became my dad. He nurtured, provided, and cared for me. He inspired and challenged me to be the woman that I am today. He is such a hero because he understood the role of a father in a child's life and didn't leave any room for me to feel alone. And she says, secondly, is my spiritual father and friend, Bishop Henry Luke Orombi. He invites me for all the important events, but most importantly, he takes time to give me a phone call just to check on how I am doing, just like any good father should really do. Those calls are priceless. And finally, she says, I also appreciate and celebrate my very special nephew, Jesse Eki. Jesse is navigating a complex family story, but he is turning it around. He is a preacher, a prefect at school, and the best student <laughs> in his class. He is turning an imperfect story of his life into a great testimony, <clears throat> appreciating the model men in our midst on this International Men's Day the 19th of November. And in studio with me is none other than uh, Caroline Oyera Papawok, Christine Obonyo, Grace Chayonka, and Sarah Gloria Vavirienansubuga, talking to us about the people, particularly the men that they appreciate in their life. When we took a break, 
Carolyn was speaking to us about why we talk about equality but then we don't practice it in its true truth, in its reality. So Carol, I would like us to start from there. Who are some of the men that you would like to celebrate today on this International Men's Day? I think before I even go to the men mm. who I would like to celebrate, just to add mm. that um, one of the other, you know, um, way that uh, probably the um, equality was kind of like tweaked mm. you know, wrongly <coughs> is that um, the men, of course, some of these uh, agitations for equality also came from some of the men, yes. which was a good thing. But I think with time when the, when the girl or the woman was rising, mm. uh, rising up to the occasion, mm. I think that the men, some of the men felt mm. like, no, this is too much. This, this is, is not what we were, this, this not what we're agitating for, for you know. <laughs> and yet I believe the men who have taken it in stride mm. and supported and said, yes, we want our daughters mm. to be women of substance. Mm. And they have actually let the women shine mm. and, and, and arise. Mm. I think those are the men who have benefited and probably mm. have no qualms. Especially if those women stayed humble, respectful, yes. and women of dignity. Yes. And the men also start kind of like accept behave, their funny, rights. Then yes. it becomes a different case altogether. True, together. true. And so in that light, mm. I want to, first of all, appreciate and celebrate my husband, <sighs> uh, Mr. Alan Dokoria Papaok. Yes. I celebrate you, Alan. Um, when I met him, he, you know, like Christina Alia, Alia had said, the husband used to offer her money to mm. go to the salon. <laughs> I think because I had been independent for quite a while, I found it very hard because I remember him trying to, to make an offer silently. Mm. But because I was this independent kind of person, in my mind I was like, hmm, he thinks I cannot do this myself. So <laughs> I, I took long to actually embrace that. To you become get. a good, you took long to become a good receiver. Yes, a good receiver. You were only a good giver. <laughs> I was only a good giver, <laughs> and so it was hard to receive. But and I think it, it kind of like, probably initially it also made him lay back. Mm. But then with with time, he you know I got to learn that actually he's also coming from a very giving and loving heart, and he's actually such a giver that at times I really feel overwhelmed and I want to hold him back and shake him and say, man, that's too much. I thought you wanted to hold him tight, hold him back. <laughs> no, because this man gives to the world, apart yes. from me, to okay. everyone around, yes. that it's like it's too much. Mm. Until I realized and said, you know what, this is the heart that God has blessed him with. Yes. I should not limit his blessings, mm. you know. And so I let go and I repented and I said, God, this is your son. Yes. Use him as you will. So I would like to tell of blessings. Yes. And then the other thing is that he supported me in my professional life. Mm. As an accountant, I have worked years, late, late days or mm. late nights, should I say. Mm. But this gentleman has been very accommodative, very caring, very concerned that um, for someone else they would have probably wondered what is it that you're doing at night mm. in the office and there's something else. Mm. But no, he's, he's my cheerleader. Okay. The things I'm not able to do, he helps do. Mm. He's, he's been taking my children for immunization over mm. the years. Mm. He actually knows his way around the hospital with the children mm. more than I. Yes. So I celebrate him because really he's such a, a helper. Okay. The other person I would like to celebrate is my late grandfather on mm. the maternal side. <coughs> He's, uh, he was a Reverend Canon, Reverend Canon mm. Erasto of Sereco. And um, what he did is in raising the sons that he raised, my mm. uncles, because mm. I learned from them, but I attribute it to him. Mm. I have picked from them humility. As men, these are men you see in the home peeling, yes. cleaning. Yes. And, and I was lucky that I also found a man just like them. They, they, they taught me certain things. Mm. And I would like to appreciate them. They are my friends. And all that is because of my grandfather, the Reverend uh, Canon Nerast of Sirico. Okay. And uh, lastly, mm. I would also like to appreciate my son, mm. Daniel. Mm. I see Daniel is 15 years old. Yes. But Daniel is a respectful man. Mm. He's a, a gentle giant. Wow. Uh, even with our help at home, he is respectful. Mm. 
and and so I'm like I keep praying to God and saying, you know what? Bring that daughter in law <laughs> that will really appreciate this man. Yes. Because I know he will love. He will serve the nation. He will serve the wife and all those around. Mm. And so he's excelling in school and he is gracious, you know, to all those that need help in class. Awesome. Yes. Wow. Good men are there, mm. young and Raising old. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the way Gloria here is saying, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think her hope is back. <laughs> a message moment number five from Mrs. Hope Bizimana, a 60-year-old member of Synod for Mahavura Diocese, a former human resource specialist at NSSF for 25 years and a current board member for Uganda Electricity Generation Company Limited. She says, my father, the late Ernest Rubeba, is my hero. He used to walk on foot from Gahini in Rwanda preaching the gospel. When he finally settled in Chisoro where we were born, we settled in a community that did not believe in girls education during those days. But because he had a relationship with God, he cherished education even when he was not that educated himself. He knew that all children, boys and, and, and girls, are equal before God. And therefore, he took all of us, his seven children, to school using his small salary and proceeds from selling kerosene and bananas. It pains me that he passed on while I was still in senior five before I could get a chance to reward him handsomely. My other hero, says Hope, is my brother William Rukundo, who took over from my dad and educated me to the university level. He did not have too much, but he did it with commitment. Those two men are my heroes today. And on this International Men's Day, I thank God for them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I also feel like clapping. <laughs> and then another message before I come to Gloria from Mr. Mugabe. Deacons, Africa Renewal uh, Ministries. He says, I celebrate Stephen Setimba, my mentor, a pastor, my model, my father, my friend, an encourager, a boss, and a man that I so much look up to in life. I super love you, my man, Stephen. Keep rocking this world. I am so proud of you. <laughs> Let's come to Gloria, my awesome friend. Young girls are taught that all men are evil, they are bad, men are dogs. <laughs> what has been your personal experience? My experience about men being dogs? You know, Generally. all men are bad, they are evil, beasts. What has been your experience? Is it what you have found out also? No, I've, I've not searched like the whole world, but at least... Yes. The men that I've seen, I cannot say like all oh, men are evil. Mm -hmm. I call those like stereotypes. Yes. So someone maybe has been hurt by one man, mm -hmm. so they like, but have you tried? Okay, they generalize like every yes. man is like that. Every boyfriend that I'll meet maybe will treat me like yes. that. Yes. But have you tried every man and you realize you that they're like all like that? You feel like you want to ask them, oh, did you test everybody? Exactly. All men or not? Like you're saying all oh, like, <laughs> you really have. <laughs> Experience. Actually, yes. to ask is your father also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You ask <laughs> that lady, is your father among them? <laughs> it could be a puppy. And wow, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> but indeed, if, if, if all men are, are dogs, uh -huh. then we are bitches. All includes your dad. Mm -hmm. And so, if your dad is a dog, mm -hmm. what does that make you? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we abuse people without looking at what we are doing to ourselves. Yeah. You point at somebody like this with one finger, but three are facing you, and even one is not yet decided. You never know where it will end up facing also. <laughs> That's very monumental what you've just said. So, today on this International Men's Day, which man or which man in your life would you like to celebrate? Okay, so on International Men's Day, I would love to first of all celebrate my father. Mm. He's uh, unfortunately in heaven, mm. hopefully. Unfortunately. Fortunately, yeah, he's in heaven. <laughs> But this man, there is no man that I've ever loved like this man, yes. my father. I, I could describe him like in three words. Mm. He's, protect, he's a protector, mm. provider, mm. and a disciplinarian. Yes. Disciplinarian. Yes, yes exactly. Mm. So 
Okay, I would love to, to describe him as like a dad, mm. not just a father. You know, every wow. man. What's can the difference, be a Gloria? Yes, let me. I ask. thought dad, father, yes. papa, mm -hmm. those are the same things. No, they are not. As you create me clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every man, okay, every fertile man can be a father. But not every father can be a dad. Not every father is a dad. Father is, first of all, like biological. Like you have a yes. child, yes. you conceive, yes. you become a father, mm -hmm. definitely. So, but then a dad is someone who is, the, uh, in, who is involved in the life of a child. Mm -hmm. That is in the upbringing, social life, emotionally, and yes. what, like you're there, you're present. Yes. You're a daddy. So a daddy can be not even biological. It can be someone who is just involved in the life of a child. Yes. It can be maybe a spiritual father, mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. Like they, they're not biologically your father, yes. but they are your dad. But they play the father figure in your life, exactly. and not just father, mm -hmm. but a daddy figure. Exactly, like daddy father. figure. This is awesome. And you know what? In fact, the word daddy comes from the Greek word Abba, Abba. and Abba means like a tender source of something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, so I, I, I celebrate my daddy so much. He was first of all my father, and I appreciate that. But then he went ahead and put in the effort of uh, caring for us as children. First yes. of all, like a, a protector, like I said, like mm. he would fight for you. Like he wouldn't let anything bad to happen to, to, to you. Mm -hmm. Like he wouldn't let anyone hurt you. Mm -hmm. Like he guarded us like jealously. Mm. Just like even God guards us. Mm. I mean, like our fathers are like God, our yes. gods on earth. Mm -hmm. You know, so as a provider, I mean, I saw my dad like sacrificing. Mm -hmm literally his life for us to be like well eh? mm. so he he, he he puts aside like looking good like of course he was a good looking man yes. very handsome uh, we but can see the product tall dark and handsome like almost I'm you, you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he he was always there like providing the food and the what actually the day he died after after his death mm. that's when i actually came to understand this thing very well of him being a provider yes like i thought at first that maybe because i mean he's my dad you somehow took it for granted yeah who is supposed yeah. to provide if not him he's mm -hmm. my dad mm -hmm. but when he died i saw i i i understood yes. what he did for us the sacrifices he did for us mm -hmm. because now it's us who are doing those things to our younger little brothers yes, little ones eh? yes. so you have to provide school fees you have to fight to provide like food what what mm. it's very overwhelming mm. so i keep on imagining what he, how, how we used to handle it yes. paying school fees for all of us mm -hmm. rent uh education like mm. clothes everything and you're just waiting like that is this mm -hmm. that is and he you goes just bring out the of shopping his list. To mm. and when he says i don't have you don't even understand like yes. eh? you're like hey, hey like how he's a because, big man why does i mean he like yeah but now I see life that ah, you can be there and you don't have. You see, you see, sorry, and then it all goes. Yes. You want to buy something good for yourself, but I mean, you have to look after the young one. Mm -hmm. So I mean, daddy, wherever he is, mm. I salute you, man. Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. wow. So and also someone else, mm. he's my dad too, like yes. spiritual dad. Mm. He's someone who loved me like I don't know out of the blue, like you know, <laughs> someone just loving you. Mm. He's called Pastor Andrew Chisaka. Yes. I met this man at a camp that is always organized by St. John's Church. Mm. And I, we, and we talked like just one time. Was that the camp in Namagoma? St. Mark's? St. Yeah, St. Mark's. Yes. Yeah, I came for that camp and I remember you there and it, I met him there. Yes, he's yes. a very good man. He talked to me. Actually, I was just asking him about, asking him about something. He was like, yes, I like you. Uh, actually, you're like my daughter. Like, he started treating me like his daughter. Yes. Like uh, at home when I'm there, maybe. Actually, I used to pray to God. Like, mm. I need someone. Mm -hmm. Especially when my dad died. Right. Like, yes. it was like I was missing a father figure. Mm. You want someone maybe to hug you to what? Mm. But then when I'm there, sometimes uh, it, it just out of the blue, Pastor Andrew calls. Gloria, are you fine? What is happening? And I'm yes. like, oh God, you had my cry. Mm. So sometimes I remember one day he came home. We live in a ghetto. Mm. Come on, Chacha mm. Okay, not so bad, but I mean, <laughs> it's a ghetto. So that man drove his Alphard. I love Alphards. Yes. He drove his Alphard. Mm. He was at a cash so, yes. so he called me, Gloria, are you home? He didn't even know our home. Mm. I told him, yes, I'm home. Why? I want to come and say hi to you. I want to see your family. I want to, mm. to, 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 to know be, you more. Yes. I was like, ah, how? Mm. Like, I was shocked, like, seriously. Yes. Like, he's a... A big man, like seriously, mm. driving. Mm. But he drove up to home. Yes. He came to our house. That was very humbling of mm. him. I don't know. 
if someone can tell him, but I, I, I keep on telling him this thing, like, that was a sign of love and yes. of a father, because he said, I'm going to be your dad too, and he actually means that. He keeps on texting me, what, what like, following up on your child. Yes. So I salute him as well. There's also another gentleman, he's a chairman in mm. Kamocha mm. currently. Mm. My dad was also a chairman, but when mm. he died, this gentleman took over. Like the local council chairperson? Yes, yes. local council chairperson. Mm. He's called Rubio Good Goodfrey, Mr. Rubio Good Goodfrey. Mm. But I see how selfless this man is. Mm -hmm. He serves his community for the for the for the time I've known him. Mm. Actually, all my life I've known him. Like mm. we are neighbors. I see him serving. Like I remember one time I didn't have a national ID. My dad mm. was a chairman, and I was so scared to tell my dad like mm -hmm. he could have maybe slap me. Like how could I not have? Yet my dad is the one who is a chairman. <laughs> so I went to this gentleman and I told him I don't have a national ID, and I know my dad is only supposed to sign, but you're yes. uh, a chairperson. You mm. have to help me. He was also shocked. He was like, how? You have to talk to your dad. I was like, mm. I cannot, like, I cannot. So he helped me, like, for free. Mm -hmm. And he helped me, like, take the, 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 the paper to, to different offices to get the stamps and what. And yes. they worked on me without any charge and what. Mm -hmm. So I respect him as well, even though he treats himself generally. Yes. He's a man of integrity. Like, I respect you, Mr. Robert Godfrey. Jeff. I'm calling him Godfrey yes. because my dad is Godfrey. We all go Robert. I respect yes. him as well. And all the men out there who respect women. Mm. Yes, the young men, the young boys and men who respect women. Like you treat a woman as a human being, mm. as a human person, not just like an object of sex or what. Yes, yes. Tell them, tell them, my friend. I'm telling you. Hey. Yes, uh, those things of uh, <laughs> calling ladies. Uh, you, 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 uh, whistling while the ladies whistling, are passing that by. Is the word. Actually, I was on my way here. Mm. Then the guy whistled and I was like, these things still happen. I just looked back and I was like, and I nodded my head and walked. Yeah. I was like, seriously? Mm. I mean, you can feel so disrespected. Of but course. when a man treats you so well. You uh, feel like a queen. There is a friend I have at work. He's called Dissan. That guy, that gentleman has treated mm. me so well. I, mm. even when he's back there, I told him, like, He's my clan mate, mm. so he treats me like a sister. Not just because we are clan mates, but from the day we met, even before he knew my son's name. Yes. Man, I love you, this and so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, he respects me. Those men that respect women, may God bless you, please. Those men that respect women, we are clapping for you. Those men that respect women, salute. <laughs> so if you are a man and you don't respect women, then you can be sure we are getting at loggerheads. We just have a few minutes to the end of this program today on this International Men's Day, appreciating model men. And I have another message moment from Linda Nakawesi Oyebe, a client relations officer at Finance Trust Bank. She says, I celebrate three men who have modeled humility, responsibility, hard work, love, protection, and the fear of God. Number one, my dad, Mr. Kato Joseph. Thanks for being my friend, my teacher, my safe space. Thank you for not judging me, for listening to me always, until now. It's a lot more I appreciate about you, daddy. The more I grow, the more I love you. And for being the grandfather that you also are, God bless you with all that you desire. When God made you, my daddy, he was being good to me. And then she also says, to my husband, I'm just reading it as it is, it's not as bad. <laughs> to my husband, Mr. Oyebe Isaac, thanks for being my space and place, being patient with me, loving me more. Even when I could not love myself, I am glad to do this thing called life with you beside me. You are my best friend, my Schwarzenegger, and my personal person. I don't even have the right words. Thanks for being an engaged dad for our children. You are my priest and my hero. And she says, lastly, to my special father, Dr. Francis Emron, thank you for raising for me a husband and friend in your son. I never fail to learn something new whenever I am in your audience. I wish you a happy men's day. Wow, we need to clap for this man. <laughs> so as we come to the close of this uh, program, Christine, our topic today has been appreciating modern men. 
Let's end from that. Why do you think it is really important that we take this as a practice of always appreciating the contribution that men make in our lives, in our nation? In just one minute. One good turn deserves another. Mm -hmm. When we appreciate these men, others will get to know and learn from them. And it is our desire that the men who are not doing so well mm. can model after the men that we've described here as the panelists today, or even from the messages that have been sent mm. coming in online. May we transform ourselves and become those men after God's own heart mm. and do good wherever we are placed in society. Awesome. Thank you very much, Christine. Caroline, in this environment where, you know, like we said a few minutes ago, where men have been branded evil, all of them branded evil, what would be your message to your fellow men out there? Fellow men? I mean fellow women, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, I think for me, there is good and bad in everyone. Yes. We are not perfect. None of us is perfect. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. And so us bashing other people without looking at ourselves is not right. So even as, you know, if someone has um, a shortcoming, let us do it with love and respect so that together we can grow, together we can build our families, together we can build our nation, because we can't do all this alone. Even while we feel like we have been led to do it alone as women, let us step back and you know, just submit to Christ and be able to do that which he would want us or called us to do. We do our part and to Christ, he will reward us and also give us the desires of our hearts and that men who we look up to, men who model the best there is in the world. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. And now to you, Gloria, as we end this program, what would be your message, your heartfelt message to your fellow young girls out there who are still believing God for a good husband to come? Okay. For every single girl out there, lady or woman or girl out there, mm. the, 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 the question says, believe in God for a husband. So mm -hmm. If you're believing God for a husband, then believe God. Like, don't believe God and then you try yeah, to, 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 to help God to be assistant God. <laughs> like, if you're believing God, believe him and trust him that he's going to give you that husband. And also, prepare yourself as well as a woman for that man that will come into your life. And also pray for the man mm -hmm. that he will be the right one mm -hmm. for you. Indeed. Yes. Wow. I pray that you will never, never, never get married to a fool. May God give you an awesome Amen. husband Amen. that will treat you like the queen that God deposited in you. Amen. Amen. Yes. And there are a number of other messages that kept coming in. Let me just quickly run through a few of them in uh, one and a half minutes and we close this program today. From uh, Tama Sembiro. She says, I would like to thank God for the model men in this world. Specifically, I celebrate you, my husband, Reverend Canon Engineer Paul Waso Sembilo Omulongo Omulokole, for being the glue that holds our wonderful family together. You are the most incredible man and greatest father to our children. Uh, then she says, I also celebrate my father, David Wakumire, who doubles as my spiritual father. I appreciate everything you did and you continue to do for us. I am so proud to call you my father. And then she says, I celebrate all the clergy who are model men, led by the Archbishop of Uganda and the Bishop Mutebi. I also celebrate our Father's Union model men, led by our very own President Samuel Bakutana. <laughs> you are speaking. <laughs> then she says, uh, the model men who teach in Sunday school, teaching our children. I celebrate you, Aston Ariamanya from Thorncroft Chapel, Rogers Kamlegea, Samuel Mukota, Andrew Young, Teacher Ben, Teacher Dickens, to mention but a few. And uh, she continues to celebrate many others. I think I will just share this on my, <laughs> on my uh, uh, social media handle so that we don't lose out on these messages. Uh, by and large, that has been our conversation today. The point is... Today is International Men's Day and there is a reason to celebrate many men who are doing many things right. It's not always a good uh, uh, display of, of intelligence 
for us to be saying all men are this, all women are this, all of Uganda are this, all Americans are this, that generalization is lazy thinking. Yeah. If your man, if your husband is treating you so badly, don't take him as a standard for all men. And by the way, also on the other hand, if your husband is treating you right like a queen, don't think every man is like that, so don't take him for granted. Men who are making contributions to this world, celebrate them, appreciate them. Let them feel encouraged and inspired that what they are doing is significant, impactful, influential, and leaving a positive difference. You've heard all the different things that the wonderful ladies on this panel have talked about, the qualities of the different men they have celebrated. Qualities like being caring, being concerned, involved in your children's lives, being humble, friendly, a protector, a provider, a disciplinarian, one who is daddy, not just father, a sacrificial person, one who is loving, selfless, helpful, with a servant heart, God-fearing, to mention but a few. These are the things that we, the men, should be developing. Whether you are an old man who is in your 60s, you are a middle-aged man in your 40s, in your 30s, you have just gotten married, you are in your late 20s, or you are a young boy in high school, or even you young boy who is in primary school watching us today, like the one I met the other time in Gayaza, a young boy of 10 years, and he saw me, and he quickly ran to me and said, I know you, I said, who am I? And he said, you are somewhere a Bakutana. He even said, a. I said, wow, I said, where did you get to know me from? He said, my dad and I watch you every Saturday on family TV. So even if you are a primary school child, a young boy, these are the qualities that we should be endeavoring to develop. And once we do that, we will be better positioned to lead our families in a manner that glorifies God, in a manner that makes our wives happy, in a manner that makes our children feel like they don't just have a father, they have a daddy. daddy. Until next time, this has been the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel Eba Kutana. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Caroline. And thank you, Gloria. Thank you. God bless you.